Good morning. morning. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ on this beautiful last morning, Sunday morning of October. We are so glad that you have chosen to start your day in worship with us. We have a special welcome to those of you who are gathering with us online today. Thank you for being here. Uh, Just a reminder to everyone that masking is optional here at Second Christian. Uh, We do ask that you mask up while we are singing our our hymns and responses. Uh, For those of you who are more comfortable keeping your mask on all the time, we are a mask-affirming church, and you are welcome to keep those masks on. We continue to monitor the situation and we'll update our protocols as the uh, need dictates. And um, thank you for helping us keep our worship as safe and comfortable as possible. Uh, The Evergreen Festival, our annual church fair, is happening again this year. It's going to be on November 19th from 9 to 1. And there, will be, there are notices downstairs that will be available for you to see what our needs are and the ways that you can participate. There is a place for everyone to help out with this year's Evergreen Festival. We'll be hosting trick-or-treating right downstairs following, um, at uh, 5 to 8 today, 5 to 8. And uh, see Alan or Melissa Robinson for uh, any information about that. If you have questions, uh, bring your kids by. Come by yourself in costume. I hear there's really good candy to be had um, at Second Christian Church. Those of you who are worshiping with us online, come on by. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, and it is our tradition to uh, name the saints in our midst who have passed from this life um, in the past year. We will name them during worship on Sunday morning, um, but, and everybody will have a time to um, light a candle and, and place it um, in memory of others that have died and whose memory we would like to keep alive and burning in our, in our hearts. So um, if you have a, uh, lost a loved one or friend in the past year and would like to have that person named in worship next Sunday, uh, please let us know. You can uh, write a note and put it in one of the plates on your way out today or email the church office. And if you're worshiping with us online and would like to do that, you can just post the name in our Facebook feed and uh, we'll make sure those names are lifted up on Sunday morning. Um, And now a moment of gratitude. Uh, Yesterday, Uh, was humbling and overwhelming and uh, brought me to tears more than um, a couple times and I'm trying to hold it together here now Uh, but thank you so much for uh, the expression of love and celebrating 20 years of ministry together here Um, and I, I just want you to know that it, it's, it's not all about me and it never has been. Um, we have created a community here that um, welcomes people. And, and, um, and if I played a little part in that, then, um, then okay. Uh, but nobody can do this alone. Um, so um, thank you to uh, Tom and Alan who were the kind of ringleaders of this event to Mike Effenberger, who uh, put together an amazing group of musicians whose lives have crossed our life, uh, my life, over the past 20 years, Um, and uh, to Paulette and uh, Melissa and the kitchen crew uh, for putting on an amazing feast. And uh, part two is happening following worship today, so please join us downstairs. We gotta finish off that stuff. They're gonna send it home with me. (laughs) That won't be good. Today is your last opportunity to make a gift to our um, annual Neighbors in Need offering. Um, If there are are, uh, envelopes on the table uh, downstairs, I don't know if there are any on that um, table in the back, but if you wanna um, 
uh, so you can put a cash donation in or a check and just write neighbors in need on it. Uh, this is uh, one of our five for five offerings through the United Church of Christ, and it um, um, helps our neighbors in need, which is really what we are all about. Um, and if you're worshiping with us online, you can go to our uh, website and make a safe and secure donation to neighbors in need right there. <sighs> Let us continue in our worship. Come from every direction, north, south, east, and west. Let us welcome and worship Jesus in this sacred space. Come bearing all your gifts behind the scenes, quirky, unique, and more. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with zealous authenticity. Come with all your identities, race, gender, sexuality, and all that you are. Let us welcome and worship Jesus with our whole selves. Our opening hymn is number 65, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Let us stand as we are able and sing together.
Let us pray together our gathering prayer. Welcome, welcome us, loving Jesus, as we now welcome you into our hearts and minds and worship. Let us transform and be transformed by each other so that we might perceive your presence among us evermore clearly. Amen. Let us invite the Spirit in as we read today's scripture lessons. By your Spirit revealing God, let us hear your word, that we may know your truth and follow you with new resolve to work and wait for the coming reign of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is from the book of the prophet Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and 2, verses 1 through 4. Let us listen for the word of God. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer. 
concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come, it will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faithfulness. Let us listen also for the word of God as it comes to us in the gospel according to Luke in the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus and he was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not see because he was short of stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So Zacchaeus hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, who, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and save the lost. Here ends the reading of the lessons. May God bless our reading, hearing, and understanding of these words. Today is Reformation Sunday. How many of you knew this? A few, a few. The last Sunday in October, we often observe as Reformation Sunday. It, um, officially, Reformation Day is the 31st of October. Um, on All Hallows' Eve, 505 years ago, a monk, theology professor, and beer lover named Martin Luther hammered his 95 theses famously to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany. And he posted these um, not really in protest, but um, it, was, it was a blog of 1517, right? It was, so these were posted there so that people could engage and discuss them and learn from each other. That's a lesson we may have lost over the last 505 years. But, um, so this, this was to encourage debate, to, to encourage uh, conversation. And of course, it was an event that would launch in earnest a movement to reform the Roman church. As with many reformers, he did not plan to start something new, but to call the church back to its historical roots, its biblical roots. But as we know, it led to a great split in the church, a schism 
Um, and we are here today as descendants of that. Uh, we are part of that reform movement. In calling the church back to the roots of its faith, Luther rejected any faith practice that um, did not come directly from the Bible. Um, and that's why, uh, more, more to the point, that uh, Jesus actually did it. So um, that's why we recognize two sacraments in our tradition, uh, the font, the, uh, baptism, and the table, Holy Communion, which we will be celebrating next Sunday. He brought the uh, Bible into the language of the people. Uh, the first German version of the Bible was published in 1522. And uh, one of Luther's uh, most, most famous things uh, is, is that faith alone is what justifies us, that sola fide, <clears throat> in, the, in the words of the time, um, not, not our works, um, not our contributions. Um, in, in those days, it was indulgences that, that um, Luther was pushing back on, the, this idea that you could kind of pay, pay off the church so God would forgive your sins um, and uh, led to a lot of corruption in the church. Um, but that, that faith alone. And um, he believed that everything we are and everything we can be is rooted in the power of God's grace. That's what gathers us together. That's what spreads us out and allows us to do the good work that we do. For Luther, it was all about God's grace, and he points time and time again to the love of God, a love so powerful that it could blot out all our shortcomings, all of our shortcomings, and gather us back together, reconciled again and again and again. He had a profound and beautiful understanding of God's grace. But Luther also had a shady side, and that's not the beer drinking that I'm talking about. At the beginning of his uh, ministry, Luther was apparently at least sympathetic to Jewish resistance to the Catholic Church, and he accepted them as allies in his efforts to reform the church. But Luther also expected that at some point they would convert to his new and improved version of Catholicism, and when that did not happen, he turned on them. And uh, late in his life, he penned some of the most caustic and inflammatory rhetor rhetoric condemning the Jewish people. Luther did not invent anti-Semitism. It was inherited from like-minded church fathers, um, and we don't even have to look too hard in our own holy scriptures to find these kinds of attitudes. We've heard Jesus speaking harsh words, calling Jewish leaders hypocrites, a brood of vipers, blind guides. There are troubling passages in Paul's letters. Um, one of the great church fathers, St. Augustine, had an anti-Semitic edge in much of his writing. And, and this is all part of uh, what, what has made us who we are today. And it, it would be really nice if we could just um, sweep that off to the side and forget about it. But, but it's part of who we are, and we have to, we have to own it, and, um, and we have to address it. We have to make sure that, um, that we're not continuing to contribute that. Uh, we must, when we uh, proclaim those sacred texts that have that edge to them, we must do that with great care and, um, and caution. 
these Christian tenets uh, contributed to the uh, Nazi Holocaust in, um, in the 30s and, and 40s. Um, so again, this is, this is part of who we are and, and we need to um, be attentive to that. Jesus often challenged his listeners to think differently about other people, to see things with new eyes. And he invited them and us, by example, to welcome those on the margins, sinners, uh, tax collectors like Zacchaeus, that Pharisee that uh, stood up in the temple last week, He calls us over and over again to think about these things with fresh eyes, to see them with fresh eyes. There are numerous Old Testament texts that establish a mandate to welcome the stranger, to care for widows and orphans and the poor, and that's what um, prophets like Habakkuk were pushing back on when the people forgot that they were announcing that there was going to be trouble ahead. The New Testament is full of stories in which Jesus seeks out and welcomes the other. Strangers and lepers and convicts, tax collectors and prostitutes, people society decided were supposed to be rejected and oppressed, Jesus welcomed in. Jesus, in fact, sought out the other to sit with them, to eat with them, to be in fellowship with them, and welcome them back into the household of faith. Our Bible calls us to establish and maintain right relationship. That, um, the, that's the righteousness that Habakkuk was talking about this morning. Right relationship. Right relationship with our fellow human beings, with the creation around us, with the communities that we, that we form. In light of that relationship that God has established with us. So that's the one that we are supposed to recreate. The one of, that's based in love and grace that God is welcoming us back again and again, and that we are called to do the same thing. But too often these days, our religion is used to divide us. The times that we are in seem to be separating us, drawing that line with ever clearer indelible ink. It seems to be tearing the fabric of our communities apart in ways that are real and imagined. Hateful speech and hateful violence are on the rise. So there is much more work to do in the church, in our society, in our world, because God calls us to be reformers and also to be builders, to honor what has been handed down to us, but to work toward something new, to be creators of a new thing. I believe that God is still reaching out to faithful and seeker alike, urging us to do that work not just reforming the church, but our neighborhoods, our communities, and the world around us. God is still challenging faithful people to resist the temptation to ignore others, to turn away from the stranger, to cast out or even demonize others who disagree with us, who do not value what we value, 
I believe that we must be steadfast as we declare in word and deed that every person is a child of God. Every person is called beloved. Every person is one that we should work to welcome back in. And that's the hard part, because it's every person. Every person is a valued member of our community. And this is not a call to ignore or dismiss hate or hate speech, but it is a call to engage it and help to transform it, because that is the only way forward. God is calling us to be reformers, to think outside the box, to develop new connections, to continue our work here at Second Christian, to welcome and learn together and go out into the world, to continue to experience and extend that extravagant love of God. Wherever we go, whatever we do. So we are not done yet. We are not done yet. There is more work to do. As I look around, I think most of you were here yesterday for the celebration of 20 years of ministry in this church. Um, sitting in the pew, it, uh, from time to time, uh, seemed like a, a retirement party. Um, and um, also, like I was kind of sitting in on my own funeral. Um, and. Um, Neither of those things is going to happen um, right away. So, um, so we're we're because uh, we, we can't do that again, right? No, we're gonna. Um, but it it has been a a great honor and privilege to pastor uh, this church, and um, that you have extended allowed me to extend my ministry out into the community um, to reach so many others. So. Um, thank you for the celebration, and, and thank you for your support of our ministry together in this place these past 20 years. It was humbling and affirming and um, also challenging for me to, to hear um, many of the words that were spoken yesterday and, and, and know that um, I need to be that guy. I'm a bit of an outlier among my colleagues. Um, in the United Church of Christ, the, the average uh, pastorate is uh, seven to 10 years these days. Um, I've, I've exceeded that a little bit, um, but, but I don't think we are done yet. I don't think we're done yet. Um, somebody asked me yesterday, how, did you, how have you done that for, for 20 years? And I, I said, I know, I've, the only thing I've done longer um, is I've been married and, and a father. That's um, longer than 20 years. Um, so uh, my, my first uh, response is stubbornness. Uh, and I only am half joking with that, uh, but, uh, but I continue that. Uh, that the joy and faithfulness of the community I serve has, has enabled that to happen. So um, thank you once again. Um, but it's also that, that we're, we're, we're always doing something new. We're, we're always looking for what um, the, next, the next step might be. Um, Don has an idea of, of something that will happen. Um, the, our Evergreen Festival is gonna be different this year than it, than it has been before. Um, we are, we're, we're honoring the past and, and moving with, with our gifts and our abilities and, and who we are today into, into something new. 
God is doing new things here. So we're not done yet. I'm not done yet. But I think we're on our way. I think we're on our way to what will be next. May it always be so. Amen. Amen. As we join together in prayer this morning, I invite you to lift up names and situations that should be in our hearts and minds today and through this week. Virgil and Dean. Barbara Lafferty. Samira. Berwick Estates. Is, oh, Berwick Estates. Paul Pelosi. Tom Bassett. Bassett. Invite also your prayers for Emma and Elliot um, to uh, young, young children struggling with cancer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for gathering us together in this place at this hour, for gathering us young and old together to lift our praise, our prayers, to hear your word and your will for us. We give you thanks for cool, crisp autumn days, for music that touches us and connects us one to another. We give you thanks for celebrations and the new things that you are creating in our midst. We pray for peace in our world, for the people of Ukraine. Pray for the peace negotiations happening in Ethiopia. We pray for a healing of the culture of hate that seems to be growing in our midst. We pray for victims of political violence in every place. We lift up in prayer today Paul Pelosi and the Pelosi family. We continue to lift up prayers for those struggling with COVID, and we lift up especially Berwick Estates on this day. We pray also for Emmy and Elliot, for Virgil, Dean, Barbara, Samira, for Tom, 
for those whose names we lift up to you now in silence. And for those whose needs are known to you alone. We pray finally for ourselves, for strength for the day, joy for the day. Encourage for the path forward. Hear these and all our prayers, almighty God, for we lift them up to you in Jesus' name who taught us when we pray to be bold and say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We come now to the time in our worship when we are invited to respond with a financial offering. There are plates on the table as you leave the sanctuary. If you would like to make a gift to the church, you are invited to do that on your way out. For those of you who are guests of ours here today, please feel no obligation to participate. Your presence here is gift enough. For those of you who are worshiping on, with us online, we invite you to visit our website and make a safe and secure donation there if you are able to do that. But I also invite us all to consider the gifts that we take with us from this place, our, our faith, our love, our courage, our stamina, um, to take that out into the world and do the reforming and healing work that is so desperately needed. Let us worship God with all we have and all we are. Let us bless our gifts. Thank you for choosing to receive these gifts that we now share with you, gracious God. Bless each offering, including our very selves, and let every single one be given in service to you. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 272, the church's one foundation.
Now, friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord's countenance be upon you and give you peace this day and always. Amen.